well, here we are at 156, which is 156. Three years worth of Tuesdays complete. <laughs> yeah, really doesn't seem like I've been doing that for this long. But anyway, we are up here this morning and we've got a couple of jobs to do um, before we get into any of like the three year celebratory -ness stuff. Um, got a couple of things I want to do. First of all, I need to get the onions out of the greenhouse into the cold frame because they're ready to go out, really. We've got a couple of coldish nights coming up. Um, oh, I'll tell you what, though, I looked at the weather forecast. It looks like we're going to have like two weeks of sun. Well, I'm just going to say that quietly. <laughs> but that's what it looks like on the forecast. But because we're going to have uh, clear skies like overnight, um, temperature's going to get a bit nippy. I do want to get the onions and the broad beans out, but I think the broad beans will cope no problem. Um, I mean, the onions are probably cope as well, but they just look so, sorry, I keep looking at them. They just look so perfect. I'm gonna stick them in the cold frame for a couple of days. Well, probably for a week or so before I get them out, but broad beans are gonna go straight in. That is the plan. Um, but yeah, everything's looking pretty good in that greenhouse. Let me take you in there and show you, and then we'll get the onions into the cold frame and take the broad beans up there to plant them out. Lil with us this morning. Look how curly she is underneath. Look at that. You're like a sheep, Lil. Yeah, you're like a sheep. You're like a sheep lady. Okay, this is where we are in the greenhouse at the moment, see? Things are looking pretty good, actually. So these are my onions, which are just looking so lovely. I'm a bit nervous about putting them out. Even though it has been quite cold in here. Broad beans, they're gonna go out today. Um, sweet peas terrible mess desperately need to go out uh, and the second sowing of sweet peas we've had a bit sporadic germination but it was saved seed from a friend um, and I'm quite happy with what has come up they'll mix in really nicely with the other ones the beetroot and spring onions are looking good we've got those onions over there we have who's this oh they're my nipper leeks fantastic they're coming up that's the really skinny like young leek and these are supposed to be my zebrun but all i can see is one absolutely tiny thing coming up there and that is definitely not an onion so i don't know what's going on there also the peas are all coming up looking lovely actually i'll show you what the peas that we planted out uh what was it two weeks ago now are looking like they look fantastic they've really really taken off so thumbs up let's get the onions into the cold frame sun's come out. Now for the broad beans. It's bright.
Take my screw off. At least, yeah. I, at least I worked out how to do it <laughs> after losing my bit. Yep. I can't remember where the spring went now, but. It goes there. What happens is that thing goes on there and the spring goes, fits on it. Ah. I was just going to put this on. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, how to waste time. <laughs> This goes on. Oh, and that's the pressure. Ah, that's it. It's nothing to do with it. That's my own bit. <laughs> and then I just screw this back in. Do you want me to push down while just you want, just while I get started? That's it. Right, okay, I've just got to screw for a while. <laughs> Excellent. Let's go and string up some broad beans. Okay, hey girlies. I know, Christ is averted, girls. Yeah. So, isn't it? You take something apart to clean it, and then it's just. <sighs> anyway, let's string up those broad beans. There wasn't as many as I thought because two didn't come up. Um, so, they were going to be in double rows, like I say, but now they're just in single rows. Not an issue. I've got a whole nother load of um, Eleanor Express to go in. So, now I've got these in, I can sew my other broad beans. So, it is all moving ahead beautifully. <laughs> okay. Let's get these. Are you ready to be strung up, chaps? Well, here we have uh, the broad beans. Obviously, they're at quite different stages. I mean, this one is about to flower. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, but, you know, it was an unprecedentedly cold winter, so things happen, and I'm quite pleased with that. Now I've got them in, I shall um, sew the Eleanor Express.
Right, I'm just topping up the greenhouse potatoes. So these were planted out on the 4th of March. As you can see, they're looking pretty snaz. We've only got one potato in each one of these pots because they're quite small pots. Um, and I'm putting them up, or not potting them up, topping them up with the same mix that I planted them into, which is a three-way split of our own compost straight from the compost bin. Um, potting compost, like a peat-free potting compost, and also a well-rotted horse manure. So it's just a clean three-way split of that. And I'm just covering them straight over, so I'll bring the soil up to the top of the pot. When I planted these out, I got a lot of comments from people saying, oh, it's not necessary to do that. You know, people have done experiments and done them both ways and found no difference. Well, this is just the way I do it. So <laughs> that's what I'm doing. But anyway, these are looking really fantastic. I'm going to put these back in the greenhouse and they will be in there probably until the end of April. And then they can be turfed out and have a life outside. But yeah, so this is my early crop of Red Duke potatoes. something else that's going on the american crest i think i said this last week you could just see it starting to go to flower well it's really going to flower now but the stems are all still really soft so what i'm going to do is chop the whole lot down at about that height and uh, turn it into soup and we'll see i won't rip it out of the ground just yet because it might come up with you know an, another flush of nice soft leaf that we'll be able to pick before we actually take it out of the ground um, but yeah, I think if we just left it now, that would be it over. But I think it would probably make quite nice soup. I'm thinking like watercressy type soup. So it's just going to be um, potato, onion and garlic with some vegetable stock and then throw all this in at the end and then blitz it up. That's the idea. Uh, we will see. So that's taken the majority of that right down and these ones on this end I'm going to leave to flower and collect the seed because these were all self-seeded ones last year and it worked an absolute treat. Okay well I think that's probably going to be it for us up here today. We've topped up the potatoes, got the beans in, onions are in the cold frame ready to go and next time I'm up here the onions will probably be ready to go out because uh, tomorrow is my birthday and I've just been informed rather short notice that I won't be waking up in the UK tomorrow. I'm not entirely sure where I'm going um, but I'm going somewhere <laughs> so yes yeah, so I've got to go and get washed up and throw a bag together and go to the airport. Basically that is my afternoon sorted. Uh, I don't know how much filming I'm going to do while I'm out there because it's supposed to be a bit of a break. I will do a bit, obviously, but um, yeah, the next time you'll see me, we're off to a mystery destination. And then when we get back, it is courgette sowing time. Very exciting. Courgette sowing, thinking about sowing some carrots, and it's going to be three years of Plot 37 on YouTube celebrations. But let's go on holiday first. Yep, I'm off, Lil. I'll leave you in mum's capable hands. I will. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful pussycat.
this morning and this is what we woke up to. So today Taps uh, is my birthday and uh, last night, surprise, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't planned, I didn't know I was coming here. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we jumped on the plane, as you saw. Uh, uh, I didn't manage to film getting off the plane or when we were on the plane because uh, we had a bit of drama trying to get the suitcases on, you know, what it's like, last minute things. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it is my birthday and this is where I'm spending it. So I don't think complaints can be had. It's pretty magnificent, isn't it?
Good morning, we are back. And I've got to say it would have been incredibly depressing to come straight back into a gray gloom. However, the sky looks like this. Doesn't it, Lil? Isn't it glorious, that girly? <sighs> Is it wonderful? Yeah, it is wonderful. Met lots of other pussycats while we were away. We did. Yeah, did. Loads of pussycats. Okay, and the thing that I'm most excited about uh, for this episode <laughs> is uh, it's down in the car. So I'm going to go and get it now. It requires wheelbarrow. Well now, as you can see, the first thing on that list says swing up. It's not really a swing to be honest, it's more like a seat, a swing seat. Not like the swing sofa, like a proper seat. <laughs> and it's going to go in the tree above me, but I just want a bit of a caveat. Um, I don't know if you remember last year, about this time and all through the summer holidays, we had a cricket coach in the cricket field just next to us called Rocket. And all the team just used to shout Team Rocket constantly through the videos. Well, he's back. So you're probably going to hear a bit of Team Rocket shouting. But anyway, so this is the area that I cleared. Remember that I had to move the chicken run over and I had to move the cold frame over. Well, this is what it was for. And I am very excited about this. So I've just moved out of the sun, so I'm not like this. <laughs> so it's going in the oak tree on the corner of the plot next to the shed. It is the perfect place. So what we're going to have is the swing seat there next to the shed. And then we'll have the swing sofa. <laughs> 
sounds a bit posh really isn't it but i have the swing sofa on that side so that's the place where you get the last um sun of the evening and right in that corner of the shed so like opposite sides of the plot you get the very like the really early morning sun it's gonna be coffee spot <laughs> but regardless of that um i'm gonna get it up on that tree now the branch that i want to put it on is really high and before i went away i was throwing like stones with string attached to them over the top and I managed to get one in what I think is the right place. Sorry, cricket screaming. <laughs> um, so I'm going to just now, because obviously the rope that I want to tie it up with is way too thick for me to throw over because it's quite high. Let me just turn the thing around so you can see how high it is. So yeah, the string, I don't know, can you see that bit of string? If I bring my finger in, you see, it's just on that branch up there, but it's actually really quite high up. But yeah, you see how tall that is. It took me a bit of time to get that piece of string over and now I'm going to tie my rope to one end of the string and then hoik the whole lot over. That's the idea, if it works. <laughs> Team Rocket. Um, yeah, if that works, I will be a very happy bunny rabbit and then we'll get the swing on there and then it'll be very difficult for me to do anything else for the rest of the day. That's the first thing. Well, that's annoying the string broke there's a bit of a flaw in my plan i'm gonna to have to go for ladder option at least it's actually over the right point bliss this is just perfect so this piece of magnificence oh it's bliss you know how much i love a swinging thing <laughs> but this piece of absolute magnificence comes from uh, raw studios which uh, i'll put all of the details to raw studio stuff uh, underneath in the notes underneath because i was lucky enough to have a studio like four doors up from nick's workshop for a couple of years and uh, i met him again at chelsea last year so he's always at chelsea he has brilliant stand of the most unbelievable swing chairs and other things but th like this is the most simple model of the swing chair i really hope you can hear me over this nonsense going on behind me um, but this is the most simple model. He has got some extraordinary swing chairs, like swing chairs of dreams. Uh, but I am so happy to have this coffee spot on the allotment. I am proper chuffed. 
Now there's other things on that list that I need to do, but this is just... Yeah, so back to it. Sorry, I got distracted then. <laughs> uh, so basically an enormous thanks to Nick because it's a joy and he's made me and mum extremely happy. And this is our exciting addition for three years of Plot 37 and it couldn't be any better. Couldn't be any better. How incredible is that chair? <laughs> I just keep installing features in the allotment that are going to stop me doing allotment. But still, that's just bliss. That's absolute bliss. Just, and that spot, like, is right where, like I said earlier, like, that's the morning sun. It's perfect. Anyway, <laughs> there's actually things we're supposed to be doing today, like gardening things rather than, like, pimping the allotment things. Um, and uh, one of them is going to be planting out the onions. Now, you remember before I went away, I put the onions in the cold frame. Well, they're looking fantastic and we're just going to put them out and they're going to go into the same bed that the other onions that I've got are in. So we've got three types of onions. Don't know if you remember, Johanna uh, went a bit wild on her onion set planting. And I don't normally grow onions from sets, but she had so many. Um, there was a red one, a white one and a brown one that I just planted them out in one bed. But there was a combination of uh, some of them didn't actually come up. Some of them uh, were taken out by squirrels and some of them were pulled out by the crows. They just pull them out and leave them on the surface. And some of them you can rebury and they take, but some of them they just dried out and uh, we didn't catch them in time. So we've lost quite a few in that bed. So what I'm going to do is, although at the moment they're very neatly planted with uh, red, white and brown, I'm going to infill all the gaps with pink. <laughs> Uh, which are my magnificent pink panther onions, which I don't know if you remember last year, but I happened to find some pink panthers in, um, I think it was somewhere in Somerset when I was out there with Johanna. And I loved the name so much. I was like, yeah, we'll just have a go with them. And actually they turned out to be the most beautiful onions, like a pale pink, gorgeous, not huge, but just beautiful, small onion. Mm. Anyway, that's what we're doing. We are going to put them into the onion bed dot them in. I planted the ones that Johanna gave me really, really sparsely because we were planning to put other things between them. So I'm going to see how many of those onions I've got, where I'm going to infill them. I might be doing double rows or I might um, just like sow radishes down between them. Uh, but we will see when I start laying them out. However, there is one more exciting thing, uh, which is a new addition to the plot, which we are about to trial in action. Well, you know, I have my uh, Hori Hori from Nilwaki that I bought ages ago and then I bought Johanna one. Well, uh, Gepito offered to send me a Hori Hori so that mum and I would both be able to get in on the Hori Hori action and they have lasered the blade. So look what we've got. Three years of cheers on Plot 37. Look at that. Absolute beauty. And this one has got a depth marker on the back of it, which is pretty useful. But yeah, I'm incredibly pleased with that. Thank you so much, Gepito. That is wonderful. So mum and I are now going to be able to hori hori together in harmony. <laughs> and that's what we're about to do now. We're gonna weed the onion bed, get the onions out, and it's all gonna be hori hori based.
of those magnificent onions. It's ended up being a whole mix of all three colours, but never mind. And I jostled some from the end so that uh, instead of having sort of half rows, we've got them all in full rows and we've actually got a bit of space at the end where I'm going to throw in some radishes. So yeah, okay use of space. In the end, I'll just water these in and then uh, we're good to go. I'm not actually going to cover these onions. Uh, we do have uh, Allium leaf miner here and we get it sometimes quite badly. Um, which is a little fly which um, lays its eggs and then they the grubs bore into the onions um, which isn't that great but it's not the end of the world but the last couple of years our leeks haven't been that badly affected and they haven't been covered so actually I'm just going to risk it While I'm here under the tree, crossing things off on the list. Uh, just have a look at the Akebia quinata that we've got growing up the um, trellis at the you know the bit that's blocking off the cricketers. <laughs> Not soundproof, unfortunately, but you can't really see them. Um, yeah, but have a look at the flowers; they're looking magnificent. Look at these absolute beauties, aren't they? Just gorgeous. Oh, I love them. And. They smell of chocolate. Also got a load of these Asturian tree cabbage sprouts to pick, which is marvellous. The Cavalier Nero ones are sort of coming to a bit of an end now. Um, they've got a bit tough. We're still eating them, but um, yeah, they're a little bit on the ropey side, whereas these are still soft as anything. And unfortunately, it's really just these two of, of the brassica sprouts that we're going to be eating this year because my purple sprouting broccoli completely failed it got really got by the cold weather so we got none of that and likewise the uh, nine star broccoli the perpetual cauliflower also as you will know uh, bit the dust so these are really the last of our brassica sprouts for this year oh my word it is the most beautiful day I've got to go home and sew courgettes. I mean, sewing courgettes is exciting. But I do not want to miss this. And looking at the weather forecast, we have got, um, what have we got, like another week of grey weather. It's not getting that cold, but it's grey weather. Well, the real dilemma is the fact that it is actually um, Tuesday now. Um, <laughs> because my incredible patrons uh, who keep this vlog going um, normally get their video out on a Monday, but because of going on that trip, which I didn't know about, um, I was somewhat held up this week. And so everything is delayed. They're not getting their vlog out till Tuesday. I mean, it's all over the place. And they, uh, it's what, like lunchtime on Tuesday. I've got to take, I've edited most of the video, to be honest don't want to go home yeah I mean how am I supposed to leave this how am I supposed to leave this so the options are we leave it until tomorrow to sew the courgettes where the grey weather is coming in which I think I might have to use as an example of how you have to be adaptable when you're growing vegetables <laughs> or growing anything actually. But I think I'm gonna use that as uh, an excuse um, because I really, I've got my editing stuff up here. I can just stay up here in the sunshine and just absorb it because tomorrow's gonna to be gray and tomorrow sounds like more of a courgette sewing day than today does. It is wonderful. My onions are looking perky. No sign of the potatoes yet though, which is interesting. Actually, what I'm not going to do is give you a plot tour because that is going to be next week's video. Uh, plot tour and courgettes now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I did say I would show you how the peas were doing. Looking absolutely fantastic. 
they're really i mean they're twice the height and you can see they're really starting to grip on now and the moment they get that grip they just rock it straight up excellent but what I had intended to do this week was really talk about quite a lot of our plans for the allotment for the coming year. And I've just run out of time uh, for the courgettes and for talking about that. So I think I'm going to have to call it a day. Otherwise, we're going to be entering the hour long marathon territory again. So, yeah. Right. Action. Well, I did indeed run out of time, chaps. I had so much... I wanted to fit into this video. <laughs> um, not, well, very little of which actually got into it. However, we got the swing seat up, which I'm so happy about. So huge thank you to Nick for that. Don't forget all the, like the link to the website, just go and have a look at it because there is some stuff on there, I can tell you. I want it all, basically. I want everything on there. However, uh, yeah, huge thanks to him for giving that to me. That was just a joy. Uh, also, thank you very much to Gepito Tools for um, our now dual Hori Hori action that we've got going on. <laughs> so that's a huge thank you to them. Uh, um, obviously the main thank you uh, just goes to everybody who's been watching me for three years. I think it's quite fitting that my like three year anniversary vlog was such a shambles. <laughs> yeah, I had plans. I had plans, very few of them worked out because I was thrown off by being whisked off to Italy and there's just, which was just marvellous. I'm not gonna lie, it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, so a lot of the things that were gonna be in this week's video are going to be in next week's video. Uh, I'm gonna do a plot tour. So instead of being like the last one of the three years, it's gonna be the first one of the fourth year of Plot 37 where we do plot tour, look at all the things we're planning to do in the future. We're gonna sew the courgettes, I promise. That's courgettes, cucumbers, and the pumpkins. So it's like the cucurbit family is all going in. I'm also going to do a chocha and all of those. I did pick up some quite exciting seeds when I was in Italy. Um, so we're gonna be doing all of that. And it is gonna be next week. <sighs> Sometimes these things just happen. Uh, and so that is three years of Plot 37 an absolutely whopping, enormous, volcanic thank you to everybody who's been watching for three years. Uh, it's nuts. And obviously, as always, an enormous thank you to the people who support me on Patreon. I mentioned earlier, they are the reason that uh, this has been going for this long. Uh, they just, I people's kindness and uh, the support that people are willing to give you for doing something like this uh, is outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. So it is a cheers to everybody who watches every week. A cheers to all my patrons. Happy three years of Prof 37. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, to do a big cheers with mum at the end you know like three years all the rest of it but she's gone down to the podiatrist getting something done with her toes so she's not even here uh, the sun's going down and I didn't record all the things I wanted to record it's like Tuesday it's actually after the time that I'm supposed to have uploaded so it's going well guys it's going well cheers <laughs>